Today, Art and I are talking to the author of a new book, Diana Rigg, One Tough Dame, The Life and Career of Diana Rigg. What a wonderful book. And um, Herbie J. Pilato is the author. We've met him and talked with him before. He's a not only a noted author, but a uh, producer and an actor, really a multi-talented guy. But this book is his latest and like all his other books, including the ones on Elizabeth Montgomery, um, you, you're going to be really impressed with this. Herbie J., how are you? I'm well, and thank you for that nice introduction there, John. My pleasure. You know, Herbie, I, I was taken with how comprehensive the book is. Of course, you, you love your subjects. When you write about somebody, it's obvious that you really, really care about them. And as an actor yourself and as a producer, uh, you are a, a, the perfect author for somebody like Diana Rigg. She was a consummate actress. Um, but I, what I'm fascinated by, I just wanted to start here because the book is so comprehensive. I only knew her from the Avengers, uh, Mrs. Peel, Mrs. Emma Peel. And she was iconic. I mean, she was a kick-ass beauty, you know. And I, I just, in that era, I think everybody fell in love with her. I was surprised at a, at a couple of things. Number one, you've organized a book around, if you will, around the Avengers. It's the before, the during, and after the Avengers, and then, of course, ever after. Um, and I didn't realize that the Avengers was that big a deal for her and her life because, of course, I later saw her in the Game of Thrones. You know, Dame, mm. now a, a member of the uh, commander of the British Empire, uh, Order of the British Empire, Dame Diana Rigg. But what I loved about the book is you covered everything. I really got a new appreciation for her as not only an actress, but a human being. Terrific, terrific book. So I, I just want to start there and say thank you for for really covering everything you could. The, the appendix. <laughs> the appendix. Covered the book itself. With notes. <laughs> it's, I, I'm going on too long. Forgive me. Forgive me. No, I, I thank you very much for that. I, um, I wanted it to be, uh, you know, a, a comprehensive book like all the others. And yes, as an actor and as a producer, I understood, you know, where she was coming from and in several different ways. I mean, British actors in particular love to act. They don't care what it is. They don't care what the role is. They love to act. And Diana loved to act. She would go back to the stage, which is really where it all began for her, time and again, whether you know she was doing a movie, then she'd go back to the stage. If she did the TV show, she'd go back to the stage. Um, as far as the Avengers being the center of you know, her career, or certainly in, in many ways, the center of the book, we wouldn't be having this conversation if it wasn't for the Avengers. We wouldn't be talking about Diana Rigg if it wasn't for the Avengers. She would not most likely have done Game of Thrones decades later had it not been for the Avengers. So it was that kind of thing that earmarked her, and yet she never really, uh, it wasn't a love-hate relationship. She just did it, and she kind of a, would have appreciated, kind of a, as she looks back in her life, I think she should have appreciated who she was um, during the Avengers years. And I believe that she felt that same way too. I, she, she many times said, it's like, man, I was good looking. I really wish I would have appreciated how good looking I was <laughs> and what that all meant. But she didn't want to have anything to do at the same time with the whole sex symbol thing. Yeah. So it was, uh, I guess it was ultimately a love-hate relationship with, with Emma Peel. You know, I have to uh, uh, tell you that we uh, had the privilege of reading and interviewing you on several of your books. Uh, uh, and I'll, I'll save that for an epilogue or I'll let people just go look at it online. I think you've written 20 books uh, or so. Close to that. Yeah. yeah. And, um, but the, uh, the thing that really uh, uh, marks your, at least your last half dozen works that, that I'm familiar with is the luscious, well curated photos that you, yeah. I mean, you, your research on the photos, for the photos alone, the book is worth it. But 
Uh, as far as the character goes, uh, like John, I didn't know too much about her. Uh, I knew the Avengers. I knew that she was uh, a wife of uh, uh, one of the few people that Bond girls, if you that was a wife of James Bond uh, early on. No, I'm not the even first. Sean Con not even Sean Connery. Uh, I forget the fellow's name, but he is George Lazenby. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but yeah, they and George and George Lazenby replaced Sean because Sean didn't want to do um any more bond films because it was a lack of character development and he made a mistake which i think we talked about in my sean connery uh interview he mm -hmm. made a mistake by not doing on her majesty's secret service because it allowed the character development the very development that sean was looking for and then when diana came aboard she came aboard ultimately because the producers were like, well, you know, maybe a lot of people aren't going to know George Lazenby and he only had a modeling career. It was his first role. So they added Diana to add creds to the film. And she ended up essentially stealing the film from George Lazenby, who did an OK job. But I mean, she was just so beautiful and so uh, charismatic in that role. Uh, it was just an amazing, really, performance. So, Herbert J., the thing I wanted to, to uh, segue to is that uh, we want the people to read the book. This is just a well worth the read. You're going to find out so much about this person that most of us probably didn't know. But one of the reasons is that you find stories about her, whether you get people like uh, uh, her stunt coordinator, Ray Austin, who I think wrote the, uh, the introduction of the forward. Uh, what, a, what a catch that was, boy. Uh, Shortly before he died as well. Yeah. So. so, so, but the, I think the, the important thing that uh, really struck me about Diana Rigg was that she was sort of a leader in equal pay of, of standing up for her rights. So how much did that factor into your, it appears to be a love affair with the subject that you were writing about? <laughs> oh, why? Well, I have love affairs with all these subjects I write. That I figured, you know, if you're gonna do something like a book, then make it good. I see a lot of books out there with just, just horrific, horrifically written in haste and not done with any kind of class of production. And when I signed with the University Press in Mississippi, which is a whole other, other thing when you do a book with a university press, that ups your game. You know, you can't be anything but good. Uh, you know, certainly with regard to grammar and things like that. But heavily researched, yes, I, I try to do have heavily researched um, products or books, and I try to do my best. And with Diana, I really, really, and I say this with every book because it really is the case, it is my best work. And maybe the next work that I do will be my best work. But right now, Diana Rigg, I worked very hard on it. And I wanted it to be like the third in the trilogy of 60s female icons from television. You know, Elizabeth Montgomery, I did Twitch Upon a Star. Mary, the Mary Tyler Moore story I did with Mary Tyler Moore. And now One Tough Dame, The Life and Career of Diana Rigg. All three of them had TV shows in the 60s. All three of them felt stereotyped by the roles that they played in the 60s. Elizabeth was Samantha. Uh, Mary with Laura Petrie and later with Mary Richards on Mary Tyler Moore Show and Diana with Emma Peel. And then they worked diligently to break that mold. And I think out of the three of them, Diana broke that mold completely. Oh, yeah, mm. absolutely. She, uh, as you point out in the book, she started on the stage with the, uh, is it the Royal Academy of Arts? Yes, yes. And went it, almost, uh, almost as a fluke ended up as uh, on on the Avengers. I was fascinated to find that she was not the first female lead on the Avengers and that the, the series had been on the air for three or four years before it came to America, which is the episode, which is the version, I guess, or the, right, that we know. the season that she premiered in it. And she only was on for, am I correct, two years? Two or two or three years. Yeah, yeah. two or three yeah, years. Yeah, that was and only then, honor, honor Blakeman. Um, or Blackman, yeah. um, did did the role before, or not that role, but another uh, character in the series. Sure. And um, that was when it was on in Britain. But no, it, you're right. It did not come to America with honor. It came with um, Diana. Yeah. And that was, for all of us who saw yep. the show initially, there was nothing but Diana. Yeah. Right on we that we Americans never knew. 
I, I, and quite frankly, I never saw an, a later episode after they replaced her. Yeah. Um, but she went, she wanted to go back to the stage. I, she, as you point out, she just loved acting. I mean, that was really her life, even to the point where I think it affected her marriages. Am I correct? Well, I think just, yeah. I mean, certainly Hollywood or wherever, you know, you, you have any kind of artistic temperament involved with an artist, an actress, painter, sculptor, director, writer, whatever. It's, it's not an easy uh, career to have um, a married life in. I mean, this is nothing new. It's, yeah. it's, there's been troubles, you know, for decades between stars beginning, not beginning, but ideally represented with Elizabeth Taylor and, and Richard Burton, not to mention Elizabeth Montgomery and Bill Asher and Mary right. Tyler Moore and Grant Tinker and, and yada, yada, yada. Um, but, you know, that added many times troubles like that add to, for an actor, adds to their, their craft and I don't think it really did that with Diana. I just think she was a complex person from the beginning. Um, and her life just simply did not lend to any kind of strong relationship yeah. with a man. And she certainly was just a strong woman in general who really didn't need a man, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. uh, so one of the photos that I loved was a picture of her and her husband's uh, his last name was Sterling. I can't remember his first name. Archie. And their daughter. Yes. And the Rachel. daughter, uh, grown Rachel. daughter. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Looked like Diana, a uh, younger yeah. Diana Rigg. Uh, you, as Art said, the pictures are fabulous. Thank you. Yeah. So, by the way, I just want to um, uh, say that, first of all, this is an amazing read. Just go out and read it and then go back and get uh, Connery, Sean Connery, uh, the, the, the books about uh, uh, variations of the, the, the Christmas story uh, and a lot of other things. And you can look them up online. But uh, uh, so uh, this is my chance to we've known Herbie J for probably about six or seven or eight years now, uh, interviewing on various books and projects. Uh, but he's also one of the nicest guys you ever want to meet. Uh, he came out to California. He became a page with NBC, started a career, is became uh, along the way with his work on with Elizabeth Montgomery. Uh, he's a resource now. He's a he's a he's the go to guy when you want to know something in depth about a lot of stuff in uh, particularly TV. But uh, you also, television. yeah, you also you came to Cal uh, to uh, California, but then you went back when your parents needed some help. You took care of them, so you're like a family guy. And anybody who follows you on a variety of social media knows just how decent and nice a guy you are. So, uh, you want to read a book by a consummate professional? You're just not going to find it's flawless it's just in his research, but it's written by a nice guy. Thank you, Art. Thank you so much. Really, you yeah, got to blush in here, okay? Good. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it is a fun read. And at the same time, as you pointed out, working for a university press is very demanding. At the same time, it is so well done and so meticulously researched. It is a textbook. Mm -hmm. it, I, I can see why a university uh, press would demand this kind of from you. And you, there are very, not that many authors that can do this. But you've researched it to the nth degree. It's great. Thank Very you. good. Thank so you. We, it really we'd like is. to give you we'd like to give you the last word. What, what do you want to say about uh, Diane Rigg and perhaps uh, what's going on with your next projects? Well, Diana, she definitely was a trailblazer, you know, in so many ways. She was um, a brilliant, brilliant actress, a decent human being. She also did a lot of charity work that nobody knows about. Um, and she was not into getting praise for that. But yes, all she cared about was her work and she loved her daughter who in the later stages of her life was there for her as a caregiver and dedicated to caring for her mother in her final days. So she really ultimately accomplished so much, certainly too with the last thing she did, which was uh, One Night in Soho, uh, the last film she did. She stole the movie and she essentially stole everything that she was in. Um, <laughs> As to my next book, I have um, Christmas TV Memories coming out oh. in October. 
and oh, that exactly. covers all the uh, TV specials, Christmas specials uh -huh. of the 50s, 60s, and 70s, whether it was a sitcom special, uh, an animated show, a variety special, or a TV movie. And Marlo Thomas, who did um, It Happened One Christmas, which was the TV remake of It's a Wonderful Life, has written the foreword. So I'm very excited about that. And I'd love to come back on your show to talk about that. Oh, we'd love to have you. What a great, uh, great topic. So let's leave our audience with, yeah. if you want to have one smooth read, it's One Tough Dame by Hoover <laughs> J. Pilato. And you can order it now. Yes? Absolutely. You can pre-order it on Amazon. Come to my website and order it directly from my my website. And what is that, where, what is that website, Herbie J? What is that website? It's HerbieJPilato.com. Great. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. And it's also available on barnesandnoble.com. Great. Everywhere books are sold, we hope. Absolutely. <laughs> Hopefully Herbie J, thanks. Books. Thanks again for uh, giving us the inside scoop on writing the book. It's just this. I wish we could cover more of the details because it's so it's so filled with great stories. Well, about we don't want to give away too much. You have to. Right. Get the book to, to finish it. Okay, so yeah. I think we I think we want to sign off now and let people go immediately online and order the book. <laughs> Sweet. Thank you, Herbert J. Thank you guys. Peace, everybody. For more on celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.